are in listen only mode. Hello everybody and welcome to today's webinar, Cold Laser for Smoking Cessation. My name is Dr. Rhonda Mostyn and I'm the Director of Clinical Services and Training at Therlase. I will be your host for today's webinar. We'll get started in just one moment. So, if you have any questions throughout the webinar, please type them into the question sidebar. I will get to your questions at the end of the webinar during our Q&A session, but you don't have to wait until the end to type them in. Just please keep them coming throughout. You'll see the question sidebar at the side of your screen. If you do have any technical difficulties at all during this webinar, please call the number on the screen, 1-866-843-5273, extension 244, or you can speak to uh, reception when you call. Um, unfortunately, I'm not able to check the chat bar during the webinar, so you'll have to uh, call in with any of those questions. So, let's get started on today's webinar. The first question, of course, we need to address is why even offer a smoking cessation treatments in your clinic? Well, our top priority, of course, usually is to reduce any kind of illness, deaths, discomfort, injuries in our patients. And we do know that there's many, many smoking-related illness and deaths, and this is one way we can really help uh, the population out there, um, all of these uh, many, many smokers out there. There is a large population of smokers that are seeking ways to quit. And what you'll find with most, with most smokers is that they try all kinds of options. They try many, many times to quit. Um, by the time they present to your clinic, they will have probably given it many efforts, many tries, and you might be their last resort or one of their last steps um, in, uh, from a road of, of many, many attempts. Laser does offer these smokers a safe, painless, drug-free option for quitting. So it's a very good alternative um, as opposed to, for example, nicotine replacement, which provides them with nicotine into their body. We want to get rid of the nicotine, so laser is a great option for this a nicotine-free alternative for quitting. Also, many of you probably run wellness or healthcare clinics at the moment with uh, a patient base seeking um, or, or expecting you to be their provider of um, general wellness. And offering quit smoking programs will be an excellent complement to the range of services you already would offer in a wellness or healthcare clinic. So it's a great add-on service. And of course, finally, many of you are business owners and we're always looking for new revenue streams. And this service will add a great new re revenue stream to your practice. So let's look at some of the statistics and trends in smoking for, the can for Canada and the U.S. Well, the good news is we've seen a decline in smoking over the years, over the past number of decades, and that's great. The bad news is that we still have many smokers amongst our population. In 2003, uh, the StatsCan reports stated 23% of the population in Canada were still smokers. Um, in the U.S., it was a similar number, although a little bit less, 21.6% of the population were smokers. We still see more males than females as smokers, but it is kind of starting to equalize a little more these days. So we have 24% of males and 17% of females. By 2010, the Good news, of course, is we see a decrease in the number of smokers. In Canada, we're down to just over 20% of the population smoking, and in the U.S., um, just under 20% of the population smoking. So even though we're seeing a decline in the number of smokers, there's still a very significant portion of the population who are looking for ways to quit, and we can offer them that with our laser smoking cessation. So aside from all the health care costs, we know that we can really prevent many, many different types of diseases if we can reduce smoking. We might have direct diseases like cancers related to smoking, for example, lung cancer, but we also have lots of diseases related to secondhand smoke. So when you reduce the number of smokers, you also reduce the illness that could impact children of smokers, um, people living with smokers, etc. 
The bottom line on smoking is that tobacco-related illnesses are some of the most preventable causes of premature deaths in North America. So when patients or clients come into your practices, uh, as I mentioned earlier, many of them will have uh, had several attempts at quitting smoking before they come to see you. So it's really good to be aware of what kind of alternatives are out there for quitting smoking because you will take this down in your health history. You'll ask them what types of uh, uh, alternatives for quitting smoking have you tried in the past. Well, some of the key options really are the nicotine replacement option. And what these are, sorry, the, nic the nicotine replacement options, uh, there are medical or uh, medication options behavioral modification options, um, and also there are natural remedies to all help with quit smoking. And they all have varying degrees of, of success, but let's look at some of these alternatives. So in terms of nicotine replacements, they all uh, typically work in a similar manner, which is the patient will take in less and less, less, and less nicotine over two to three months. So they'll decrease their dose of nicotine to relieve some of their withdrawal symptoms. Now, the good news is they're doing this without um, taking in the tars and poisonous gases that are found in cigarettes. And as they're taking in less and less of nicotine, um, they might be uh, breaking their behaviors, for example, holding cigarettes. Um, they might be reducing their, their habit. So some of the more popular nicotine replacements are the chewing gum, so it's nicotine gum. The problem, of course, is that we see many people become addicted to the gum itself. The patch is very popular and, and fairly easy to use. Um, there are some side effects uh, in respect to skin irritation. That's what some people complain about. There are sprays, inhalers, tablets, and lozenges. And they all really are uh, nicotine delivery systems. So instead of smoking, um, the customer is taking less and less nicotine through these um, nicotine delivery systems. The next major uh, option or a popular option for decreasing smoking or quitting smoking are medications. The two big ones are Zyban and Champix. Well, Zyban came out many years ago and really just started as an antidepressant, which uh, coincidentally, uh, people taking this antidepressant realized it was decreasing their cravings and withdrawal symptoms when they were trying to quit smoking. So then it, of course, went on the market as a quit smoking uh, medication. Um, it, I believe the success with Zyban is somewhere in the range of 20 to, 20 to 30 percent success rate. Champix had a little higher success rate, closer to 40 percent. It's called Champix in Canada or Chantix in the USA. And what Chantix does is it basically binds to nicotine receptors in the brain and by doing so stimulates the dopamine that the smokers are really used to um, having that help them feel good those feel-good uh, chemicals. Um, so by keeping them feeling good, of course, it reduces their withdrawal symptoms. So that's the main way that Champix or Chantix works. Now, there have been many reported side effects. A lot of people cannot handle these medications. Everything from anxiety to unusual behavior, nausea and vomiting, those are just a, that's just a short list of the side effects. Of course, there are several natural remedies uh, that many people use to quit smoking. Everything from chamomile, lavender, that all help to decrease stress and anxiety. St. John's wort is a popular one. It does help to boost dopamine and nor norepinephrine. And lobelia is another one. It helps to bind the nicotine receptors, um, tricking the brain into thinking that you've smoked and increasing your dopamine levels. There are also, of course, behavioral therapies, hypnosis. So once again, all kinds of alternatives out there and a huge population of smokers looking for um, the method that's really going to work for them. What are the success rates? When patients call up your office, that's one of the things they're going to ask you. What are your success rates for your smoking cessation program? They can easily look up the success rates for all the alternatives, and they just want to really have a good feeling for what their chances are for quitting successfully. So generally, smokers who give up on their own generally succeed about a 5% success rate. So it's, it's very hard to just kind of go cold turkey and, and give up on your own. The numbers increase to about 12 to 30% with patches and gums, so those nicotine, uh, uh, those nic nicotine methods. 
and then a little higher with medications such as Champix. With laser programs, we're seeing numbers much closer to about 80%. You know, some clinics who use laser will get upwards to 90%. Uh, some are lower at 60%. Some of this might have to do with the counseling that they combine with their laser programs. But on average, we see that about 80%. At Therlase, we actually ran a clinical trial back in 2007 where we took in data from a very, very large uh, sample base, 549 subjects that um, were treated in 11 different U.S.-based laser clinics. We had a lot of success with this clinical trial. And the way treatment went is that there was a, a, a designated uh, treatment protocol where the patients received up to about five laser acupuncture treatments over a two-week period on very specific ear points and peripheral acupuncture points. So there was a protocol that was assigned to these clinics and this was followed exactly. And then these treatments were combined with counseling. So that primary outcome measure, the measure of success in this trial was the percentage change in the consumption of tobacco products. And success was equated with at least a 25% reduction in the consumption of tobacco products. So if they could reduce their smoking by at least 25%, we saw that as success. And all the um, subjects were followed for 30 days. 30 days gives you a fairly good uh, idea of how well these patients are doing. If they can stop smoking for those 30 days, they're well on their way to being smoke-free, hopefully for, for their lifetime. At the 30-day follow-up, uh, these subjects were looked at. 73, or almost 74% of these subjects um, had met the outcome criteria of reducing their smoking by at least 25%. So we did very, very well in this trial. 67, or close to 68% of them completely stopped using the tobacco products. So very, very good numbers with uh, Therlase laser treatments. Now, how does it work? How can laser help? And this is another question a lot of your patients will ask you as soon, as soon as they come in or when they call. They want to know, well, how is this going to actually get me to quit? I've tried many different alternatives. They didn't work. How is this one going to work? Well, it works in two main ways. The first uh, element of the, um, of the laser treatment is that it boosts up the, those endorphin levels. And a lot of the quit smoking methods work this way. They really want to boost up the endorphin levels. What we find is that we know with smoking, smokers get a rush of endorphins, and that kind of keeps them going until they have their next cigarette. What we've seen with laser is that they get a rush of endorphins, but these endorphins are much longer lasting. It keeps them going for a much longer time, and in this way really reduces their withdrawal symptoms. The endorphins really help keep the patients relaxed, calm. It might help with their sleeping reducing stress, and overall it gives them a, a general sense of well-being. So we're basically trying to keep them feeling well, reduce their withdrawal symptoms during those early stages of quitting smoking so that they don't feel the need to go back to smoking. The other thing that we hear from uh, patients who are, who've been using the STOP uh, smoking program with laser is that they have a change in their taste threshold a change in their taste threshold. Generally, smoking starts tasting really bad. So if you have a patient coming in and they're smoking two packs a day, you give them a laser treatment, and they do really well, but they've had a couple cigarettes. Often they'll say to you, you know, I did have one or two cigarettes, but it, they tasted awful. I really didn't want to have another one after that. That just kind of did it for me. So that's another way that um, the laser is really going to help reduce smoking or get them to stop smoking entirely. Now, if you're going to practice uh, quit smoking with laser, you will need a laser device. What you see in this slide is our laser acupuncture system. It's our single laser probe. This single laser probe uses a 905 nanometer wavelength. That's an invisible near-infrared laser diode. The settings that we use are 100 milliwatt power, so a fairly high power setting, but we're treating for a very short time, only 30 seconds per point. Now, 30 seconds per, per point for most of the points. There are a couple points that we treat a little bit longer. Those are our lung points in the air, lung one and lung two. We treat for one minute each. What we're stimulating with this laser probe are auricular 
points, which are acupuncture points in the ear. And we also stimulate some peripheral points, which are points on the arms and the legs. Altogether, we treat uh, 15 auricular points plus 5 peripheral points on each side. So that's 20 points per side and 40 points total. And what you're looking at is about a 20 to 30 minute treatment. So what I'm going to review in this next section are some sample points, some of the points that you'd be treating using your laser acupuncture. It's, this is not a full certification training. If you're looking for training on all the points, um, for Theralase customers, we do offer a certification training online. Um, we do offer support, um, and that would be a more comprehensive training. But I want to give you an idea of what types of points you'd be treating using the laser. Before we can do that, you really have to have a feel for the anatomy of the ear. Whenever we describe points, we usually refer to certain anatomical landmarks in the ear. So here's a very large ear, and I'll go over some of the key anatomical points. The outer ridge of the ear along here is called your helix. So the helix runs from the lobe all the way up around the outer section of the ear and ends in this more uh, linear section called the cruce of the helix. We have our helix ending in our cruce of the helix. We have an inner ridge called the antihelix. It runs from the bottom of the ear all the way toward the top superiorly and kind of ends in these two branches, one called the inferior cruce of the helix, of the antihelix, or the superior cruce of the antihelix heading upward. These two cruce of the helix, of the antihelix, um, in between these we find our triangular fossa, which is kind of a little triangular space here. Behind this superior cruise of the antihelix, we have our scaphoid fossa, this little kind of dip behind here. The cruise of the helix separates two different um, cavities. We have our superior concha in the upper cavity, or our inferior concha in our lower cavity down here. If we move lower down in the ear, we have our earlobe and our tragus, which is this little pointy section of the ear. And this here is called our antitragus. And those are the key anatomical areas of the ear. So now we're ready to look at some of the points that would be incorporated into your laser treatment program. Shen Men is always the first point that we treat. It's a very important balancing point and is found right inside or the, toward the tip of that triangular fossa right here. And what we do is we just gently hold our laser probe perpendicular to this point and we're holding it for 30 seconds. One of our next points is, is a point called a sympathetic autonomic point. It's a balancing point. This really does help to relax the patient, and it's also called a hidden point. It's actually found underneath this helix, so we put our probe this way, kind of reaching underneath the helix to reach this point. One of our hidden points is sympathetic autonomic point. Once again, this point is stimulated for 30 seconds at 100 milliwatts. Point zero, another very important balancing point. We find this point very close to the midline of the ear if we made a line through the ear. Um, and it basically is found where the helix meets the anti-helix. And sometimes you'll find a little bump on the patient's ear. When you start treating more and more ears, you'll really start to realize that no two ears are the same. It's very hard to find a perfect ear. And that's why it will become very important to really understand these points in reference to their anatomical areas. It's hard to look at a picture and say, well, this is exactly where it goes on patient number one's ear or patient number two's ear. You have to really understand how they correspond anatomically um, to the ear. But this, these pictures should give you a general reference point for where to find these points. Mouth point's an important point because, of course, we know a lot of smokers, for example, um, have different mouth symptoms when they're trying to quit. A lot of them will complain of getting little ulcers and sores in their mouth. The mouth point is found just in this inferior concha, just outside the ear canal. Once again, 30 seconds on this point. The nicotine point, also a very important point. This will help to reduce... Uh, your, your patient's nicotine cravings. And it's found just inferior to this tragus. So 
not exactly the, at the midpoint of the trach, it's just a little bit below it. Our liver point is a very important detoxification point. Liver point is found, if you follow the um, cruise of the helix almost to its end, um, you'll find your liver point, a detoxification point. There are two different lung points. I'm going to show you one of them. It's called lung two. It's almost in the center of this uh, inferior concha area. Once again, with the lung points, we're stimulating them a little bit longer. They're very important points. We're going to treat this one for one minute, holding our laser probe perpendicular to this point. Most of the brain points are found in this lower ear section. Um, this is a very key brain point used to decrease symptoms of stress. It's also a hidden point. We hit this point by putting the laser probe kind of behind this antitragus, and um, what we'll do is, is hit this brain point from there. So that's a sampler of some of the points we'll treat. I think I showed you about eight points there. However, we, there are 20 points on one side, 20 points on the other side. Well, 20 points, and then we treat them bilaterally, of course. So the laser therapy is one aspect of the program. But anybody treating with laser therapy will also have to um, offer some type of counseling and advice uh, in conjunction with the laser therapy. Because, of course, the laser therapy is very helpful for the physical addiction, for reducing the withdrawal symptoms. But the other challenge for your customers or patients is dealing with a habit. That's a very difficult thing to deal with. And it's something that's going to be with them for a long time. So they need some coping mechanisms. Different clinics use different, um, w different models for counseling. Um, I'm going to provide you with some guidelines for, with some ideas, but what you'll find from clinic to clinic uh, is that they will kind of customize or find what works best with um, their patients, and um, or perhaps what they do over time is slowly add on more and more information that they think will help out with uh, reducing the habit for their their patients. But generally, in terms of guidance and advice for your for your uh, patients. You really need to provide tips and advice on dealing with breaking the habit. And that can come in many forms. We'll talk about that in a few slides from now. Some clinics offer nutritional advice or go so far as to uh, provide supplements or um, some nutritional methods. Um, they might sell these or sell it. these as part of the package, part of the program um, for their customers. And we always want to encourage positive thinking to keep our patients, to keep our customers motivated, um, and really support them through what is a very, very difficult thing to do. So how do you schedule appointments for smoking cessation or laser smoking cessation? Before you can even schedule the patients, you need to screen them over the phone. They're going to call and ask you many questions, so we'll go over some of those frequently asked questions in a moment. But the main thing you're really screening for over the phone is a strong desire to quit. If you can't identify a strong desire to quit over the phone, you're probably going to want to encourage them to hold off on this because it won't work. They need to have this. So, for example, I know in our clinic what we've had are people calling and they want to come in for... Sorry, we've lost our connection. Just hold on. Hello. Hopefully you can hear me again. You did not miss anything. Our network is now uh, where you have connectivity again. So back to phone screening. Once again, you need to have a strong desire to quit. In our clinic, we've had circumstances where a caller will uh, ask if they can come in on that day. They'll say, can I come in in the next few hours? I really want to quit today. Typically, those will not be your most successful cases. You might want to encourage them to wait a week. And the reason is because quitting really takes some preparation. It takes mental preparation. They might need to prepare their home. If they're really serious about quitting, this takes a little bit of work, and it's not something they'll wake up one morning and say, you know, today is the day I'm going to just do this. 
um, we really want to set them up for success. The other thing we need to screen for are we need patients who are free of photosensitizing medication and also they should be cancer free for at least five years. If you screen them successfully and you think this is a good candidate to come in, then we want to start scheduling their treatments. So what you do is you'll schedule their first treatment and that'll be about a 45 minute session. Once they come in for that treatment, you'll want to go ahead and schedule two more sessions. These are called booster sessions or follow-up sessions. The second session is usually two to three days following the first session and our follow-up session is about a month later. Now, this is a template in a guideline. There are circumstances where we might treat the patient three days in a row. There are circumstances where you might treat them once and that is really all for them. They feel that they that is all they need. So there is a bit of variability here, but this is our general guideline. Now, of course, when uh, you get calls, you will get questions. And here are some of the typical questions you might hear. Uh, callers want to know about the cost for the program. Our program cost is $300. There are clinics offering for $200, clinics offering for $400. It really depends where you're located, if you're in a large center or a small town, kind of what the standard for the area is. So ours, once again, is $300 for the program, and that includes up to three treatments. So whether they come once, twice, or three times, it's $300. Of course, there's, there's usually tax on top of that as well. You'll also typically hear our results guaranteed. You know, everybody wants the guaranteed success. Unfortunately, we can't guarantee success. However, we can reassure our callers that clinics using our program report up to about an 80% success rate. So it's a very good success rate. Can I wear a patch at the same time or chew the nicotine gum? They'll ask if they need to be completely free of nicotine by the time they come in. Well, we do let our callers that it's, know that it's best um, to be off of all nicotine when they start on our program because this will really help them to detox. We really want to get all the nicotine out of their system. But there are patients that just can't do it. They really feel that they cannot relax without wearing the patch or using some kind of nicotine. And with these patients, we still will work with them. We'll encourage them to really wean off the nicotine, um, but we don't want to turn them away. When should I have my last cigarette? We encourage everybody to stop smoking at least three to five hours before they come in for their treatment. What this allows them to do is their body will start kind of going into a little bit of withdrawal. So they're starting to get the nicotine out of their system and they come in for the treatment, you treat them, and they'll really feel the change. They'll feel that sense of relaxation. They'll feel that difference when they come in. So that's typically um, what we recommend. Can I attend one session only? Well, we really strongly discourage this. We tell them that the smoking cessation program consists of up to three treatment sessions. However, if they're really adamant about just coming in for one or just trying one session, we do have a treatment fee for individual sessions. And then, of course, you'll get your callers who are really nervous about only signing up for three treatments. What, what if I need more than three treatments? We just really reassure our callers that most patients who quit successfully do so after one treatment. You know, and the majority have done so certainly within three treatments. So we just basically give them some reassurance that that should be enough. In reality, if someone, you know, if there's a rare patient that really needs four or five sessions, you know, we will do that, um, but we don't do that in any kind of regular basis. So how do you tell your uh, callers to prepare before they come in for their first treatment? So you might want to have something written up or something on an email that you can automatically send out to your callers so they know how to um, get prepared before they come in. The number one thing, of course, is, is disposing of all their lighters and cigarettes. Uh, any um, smoking paraphernalia should be thrown out before they come in. This really shows a full commitment to quitting. You want to see that. And what some, what some clinics do is they'll keep a kind of a waste, back, a waste uh, bucket. Um, in the front of their clinic, so when the patients come in, they'll be asked, do you have any lighters, any cigarettes on you? And if they do, they will have to kind of jump those into the waste, bag, waste uh, basket. If they're not willing to do that, this may not be a good day for them to start. It, it just shows that they're not fully committed to quitting that day. The second thing is you may want to recommend that the uh, patients have their house or car cleaned. Um, perhaps when they're in for the treatment, there's someone at their house cleaning it. 
so that when they come home, uh, it smells different. They don't have that smell of smoke in their car or at their home. They might want to let their friends or family members know that they're quitting. Not everybody's comfortable with this. Some, uh, for some people, this creates too much stress, having people looking over their shoulder, wondering if it's working for them. Um, but for many, they see this as support, letting at least someone know that uh, they're quitting. If they're having any questions or they're feeling anxious, they can call that person. Rearrange the smoking areas of their home. This is very important. If there's an area in their home or on their deck or somewhere where they're typically smoking, like on a balcony, that's arranged a certain way, they really need to come back home and see this set up in a different way. And this could be just rearranging the way the chairs are, putting something different out there, just making it look and feel different. Identify some new hobbies or activities that interest them. They're going to need something to occupy their hands, to occupy their mind, uh, especially in those first weeks following um, your treatment, because the, you know, as I mentioned, there's the habit to deal with. So if they can identify some new activities they've really been wanting to, you know, dig their, their fingers into, um, this is a good time. Finally, they should really go grocery shopping. They should have their kitchen full of fresh fruits, vegetables, low-fat foods, juices, um, things that they can, snacks, um, things they can quickly grab um, if they're feeling the need to put something in their mouth rather than a cigarette, they might need to grab some food. And um, th what they don't want to be grabbing, of course, are high-fat, high-salt foods like chips and junk food. Rather be prepared with um, some really healthy alternatives. So when the patient comes in the first time, of course, you'll have to take a health history. In this case, we take a smoking health history. And here's some sample questions that would be incorporated into your smoking health history. The first thing is you want to know why they're stopping. What is their main reason for stopping? They may have many reasons. And once we know the reasons for stopping, we can consistently use this information to keep them motivated. So, for example, if they come in and say, well, you know, I'm having a lot of problems breathing, um, you know, we can really talk to them about the benefits of quitting smoking, how their breathing will become easier, how it's really good for their lung, for their cardiovascular system. So we'll use these as motivational methods once we know what their key reasons for stopping are. The other thing, of course, we have to screen for contraindications, photosensitive people or photosensitive medications, and a history of cancer. How many cigarettes are they smoking a day? We want to know when they're coming in, how many cigarettes they're having. This way we can identify if they're, how much of a reduction we're achieving. If they're coming in smoking a pack, we get them down to three or four cigarettes a day. We know that's quite successful. Have they had previous attempts? Most of them probably will report previous attempts. This is very key information because if they've tried to quit before, we know that it hasn't worked, something's happened, and we need to know what their stumbling blocks were, why do they go back to smoking, um, and we need to work on these so that if these issues come up again, we can, um, we, we've dealt with them, they have ways around them, they have ways to cope um, with these issues. What are their general habits and routine? Do they drink a lot of coffee, alcohol? These can be triggers for smoking. We might want to encourage them to drink tea or water instead to completely drop, stop drinking any kind of alcohol, at least for the first few weeks. Do they live with smokers? This is a, a very difficult situation. If they do live with smokers, they might want to ask uh, their housemates or family members to um, start smoking outside or don't smoke when they're around. So these are all um, elements of their health history that will really help us to uh, help our patients. So in terms of setting up a treatment room, you don't need to have a whole separate smoking cessation treatment room. You typically can use one of your clinic rooms. Some of the things you might want to think about are, for, uh, firstly, having a sign on the treatment door. Make sure people know that there is a treatment in session. You don't want anyone running in when you're using your laser. So have some kind of uh, caution or laser and use sign on the door. In the room, you should only have your client and the technician. So we have had situations where someone comes in, they're feeling a bit anxious, and they really want their family member in there to hold their hand or just for support. And we do what we can to encourage them to keep it at um, just the technician or the doctor um, and the client. It's also a safety issue. We are using laser and we're using our, wearing our laser glasses. Um, we really don't want too many people in the room. 
the chair or the table that the customer or patient is in should be very comfortable. They really need to relax. Um, some clinics use a recliner. Some clinics just use uh, a reclining table or a flat table. Of course, you need your laser, you need your single probe system, and you need your laser glasses. We always have alcohol wipes there because we'll need to clean out the customer's ear, ears, and we'll also need to, of course, make sure everything's hygienic from the table um, and all of our equipment. Some clinics use music, which is a great idea because it is a real distraction. Um, it'll really be relaxing, have some kind of very, could be classical music or something, some kind of background music so that they're not hearing any uh, movement out in the hallway, any voices. They can really kind of tone everything out. Dimming the lights is also a good way to keep the patient relaxed. And having a blanket or something to cover their legs, that's important because sometimes when someone's feeling a bit anxious, they get a bit cold and clammy. Um, in this case, You'll have your patient um, either with their pants rolled up or wearing a gown because you will need to treat some points on their leg. And because their legs are exposed, they might feel a bit cold. So have something to cover your patient with and keep them warm. When you're in the treatment room, of course, once again, client must be very comfortable. Before you perform your laser treatments, um, keep in mind that many of these customers have never had any kind of laser therapy before and they might really wonder, well, what does this, what does this feel like? Well, if you just go ahead and treat them in their ear um, without showing them the device or showing them how it feels, they might be a little bit anxious. So once again, we really have to work on reducing anxiety. So one way we do this is we kind of show them the device. You can show them how it looks holding it on your own hand and then demonstrate to them how it feels by activating it on their hand. And they'll see that really they feel nothing from the laser. Um, they shouldn't really feel anything at all. Of course, we have to provide our laser safety eyewear. We clean the probe very well. We clean the inside of the patient's ears. And then we can start our laser session. Now, you can, dis you can choose to talk and provide guidance as you're treating the uh, customer or patient, you have to really kind of feel it out. Sometimes they just really prefer quiet. Sometimes they just want to talk about some random, uh, you know, just basically chat. And sometimes they want some guidance. They want to know, well, um, you know, this is a good time. Can you tell me a little bit about how I'm going to cope in the next few weeks? So you really have to just really personalize this, see what um, is good for your own patient. In this slide, I'm showing you a picture of a carbon monoxide test. Now, a lot of clinics will incorporate this carbon monoxide meter with all of their laser um, quit smoking programs. And it is a very good motivational method. What happens is the first time a uh, patient comes in, they have their patient breathe into this carbon monoxide test. And it shows them the level of carbon monoxide in their breath. It's a very objective measure. Now, if that patient comes back within two days, so after 48 hours and they have not smoked at all, what they'll see is their carbon monoxide level will be completely down. In fact, it'll be at the level of a non-smoker living in a similar environment uh, as they live in. So they'll really see this change, and this can be a hugely motivational method for them to see, wow, I haven't smoked for two days and already look at this change in my system. I'm, I'm you know, exhibiting a physiological change. Um, so even just for that reason, it's a great instrument to have in your practice if you're, pra if you're planning to perform a lot of laser smoking cessation treatments. I don't know where you, can order, where you can buy these in a store. There probably are some stores, but there's lots of websites. I have included one website here, bedfont.com, but there are probably several websites where you can order these online. Now, of course, in conjunction with our laser therapy, every clinic does offer some type of counseling and advice. And as I mentioned earlier, this is really tailored to the clinic. They tend to have different types of counseling methods. But overall, it's really geared toward motivating um, your customer or your patient and keeping them on track and helping them really overcome any obstacles or, or roadblocks in their way. So once again, when you're motivating them, um, you want to really keep this personal. You know their reasons for quitting, whether it be health concerns or family concerns. Really talk to them about this. Always bring it back to that so they remember their own reasons why they chose to quit smoking. We also want to always identify rewards. Keep, uh, make sure that for them it's top of mind, all these 
really positive things, these positive rewards that will be taking place for them that they'll be receiving. For example, if they come in and they say, you know, I just had a new baby and uh, I want to stop smoking. I don't want to, there to be any secondhand smoke. You know, just remind them about all the rewards that, for example, uh, kid, we know that kids of non-smokers are much less likely to smoke than kids of smokers, that you're going to see a decreased resp respiratory illness uh, in your kids, that you're going to have an improved air quality around uh, in your children's environment. These are all rewards for them and will probably keep them motivated and keep them on track. One of the hardest things to do is overcome roadblocks, to overcome um, what your customers or patients see as challenges to keeping them on track. It might be that they don't have enough support in their life. It might be that they're totally terrified of, of failing at this. Or maybe they're f terrified of, of gaining weight. We need to know what they uh, perceive as their own roadblocks and work with this. If they're very fearful of weight gain, um, you really need to kind of bump up that nutritional counseling or talk to them about, um, you know, what they can provide them with that shopping list that we talked about earlier. If they're terrified of, of failing, you know, we just really want to support them and, and let them know that many people have had many attempts before they've come into our clinic and they've been successful. So success is down the road or, or is reachable for you. So once again, we really kind of want to hold their hand a bit, motivate them, keep them on track, and over, help them overcome their obstacles. Now, we will reduce their withdrawal symptoms, and many of your patients will say they've really had no withdrawal symptoms. But some of them might have uh, mild withdrawal symptoms. And we want to turn this into something positive as well. We want to always let them see their withdrawal as something, uh, something good, the nicotine coming out of their body. This is a really positive event for them. As they're detoxifying, all the nicotine's leaving them. And all these symptoms, if they're having any, are really signs of recovery. So this, this is a positive spin on withdrawal. Also, reassure them that it passes quickly. The worst withdrawal symptoms they will have will be within the first two weeks. Um, well, it'll be declining within that two weeks. It might be worse within the first days. They'll be breathing easier and feeling better very quickly and will have an improved energy very, very rapidly. So once again, really reinforce this positive side of withdrawal. There really aren't many supplies that you need to get this program going. Of course, the main supply or the main thing you need in your clinic is your laser. Once you have that, there's not much else you need. However, you might choose to have uh, testimonial forms. You might even want to have some testimonials in your waiting room so people see, wow, look at all these people that have quit through this. They'll find that very motivating. They'll see, well, if they've done it, you know, hopefully I can do this as well. Some clinics put together goodie bags, so after the patient's first treatment, they're given a bag with all kinds of um, uh, tools that'll help them uh, kick it or stay off the habit. For example, it could be lollipops, sugarless gun, gum, cinnamon candy. These are all things they could uh, uh, put in their mouth, chew, suck on, that'll uh, definitely decrease the chance that they'll be smoking or putting that cigarette in their mouth again. Water, very important for detoxification. They'll need to really boost their water levels, so why not start them with a bottle of water? And Or something like a stress ball, something they can just grab if they're feeling like, you know, they just really have a cigarette, let them grab the stress ball. You might want to provide information packets that contain a grocery shopping list. That's a really good aid for uh, your patients. Or some kind of checklist with information on dealing with symptoms or cravings. You might want to provide uh, a form telling them how their body will change in the next days or in the next hours or the next weeks, and they can kind of follow that or put that on their wall, and they can say, well, wow, three hours have passed, and already these changes have happened, and a week has passed. Wow, look, physiologically, all these changes have happened to my body. These are all motivators for your customers. And finally, you might want to give them coupons or referral cards or something to promote your services in your office. So. This is getting close to the conclusion of this webinar, and a couple points I really want to um, provide you with are, this is a very easy service to implement and can be a very popular service, because as we know, there are so many smokers out there. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we do have a full certification program, and you can contact us directly at www.theralace.com or info at theralace.com. 
or you can call us at 1-866-843-5273 to ask about the certification. I hope today gave you a good introduction to the Laser Smoking Cessation Program. I will get your questions just in a few seconds. One question I always get is, can I have a copy of the presentation? And what we do is um, we automatically send out a PDF version of the presentation following the webinar um, to anybody who returns a feedback survey. So within the next day, you will receive a follow-up email on this webinar, and there'll be a feedback survey attached. Once we receive that feedback survey, we will send you off a PDF copy of today's webinar. I also just want to let you know that we're having uh, another webinar in August. We have webinars every month, actually. And our next webinar will be on promoting laser using social media. So in just a moment, I will get to your questions. For those of you who will have to leave and get back to work, I want to thank you for joining the Sarah Lays webinar. So just give me one moment, please, and we'll look at some of the questions. And by the way, if I don't get a chance to get to your questions, because I can see already we have quite a few questions, um, I will get back to you privately uh, via your email address. Okay, one of the questions was asking about the peripheral points. Most of the peripheral points we treat are really balancing points. They're points to help relax the patient. Um, the ear points are really to cope with the addiction. They're more of the addiction points. The peripheral points that we treat are all located on the wrist, hand, um, or knee, or foot. So they're all uh, basically hand, wrist, hand, knee, or foot. Okay, the next one is, they're all great questions, but here's, here, here's a very good question. If a patient is getting more than three sessions, what would be the time frame between those treatments? If someone's getting more than three sessions, um, there's usually a reason why. They're really having trouble with it. And for those patients, it might be that they've had the three treatments, or they've had two treatments close together, and they just can't make it to the next day or two, and they'll give you a call. The likelihood is you're going to be treating that patient fairly soon, you know, probably within a day or two, um, just to make sure they're weaning their cigarettes, weaning their numbers um, as you're treating them. If you're getting to the point where you're treating them five or six times, you really might want to sit down with them and say, listen, are you sure this is a good time for you? Are you sure you're really ready for this? Because there might be something else in the way that's really blocking their success. So consider maybe having them save their treatments or resuming in a month. Um, you know, you really may need to re-examine their history. Okay, here's a question. What if uh, one spouse wants to quit, but the other spouse is not interested in quitting? Can you provide some extra form of support for the wife, so for the, uh, for the spouse? So I guess the question is if, if what happens if you find that your patient is not going to get the support that they require um, from their spouse or from their family members? There's all kinds of other support that you can supply. There are lots of 24-hour numbers. There's a lot of quit smoking support numbers. And what I would do is really provide your patients with some of these numbers that they could call at any time. They always will have someone to call. Um, there are clinics that will offer their own cell number or doctors that will offer their own cell number so that these customers always have somewhere to call. But if you don't want to go that route, there are lots of, um, there are lots of uh, support lines that you can offer out there. Okay, the next question is how long are the treatments after the initial treatment? Um, as I mentioned, the, you know, it depends on one thing, it depends on the level of counseling, but generally we set aside 45 minutes for the first session and 30 minutes for the subsequent sessions. That's our general, um, uh, when we're setting up treatments, that is our time allotment. Okay, we have another one here. Do you use vitamin B complex or another nutritional supplement uh, to help with patients? Um, in our clinic, we don't. What we offer is we offer advice um, on foods they can have on juices, um, but we don't actually provide them with any kind of supplements. 
there are many clinics out there that do. It is a very good idea, or it's, it's, a, good, um, it's a good thing to offer as an option to your patients. Okay, someone asked us to repeat our phone number. It's 1-866-843-5273, one 843 5273 but you can easily contact us by uh, going on the web and looking for Theralase, T-H-E-R-A-L-A-S-E. -E. Uh, that's all the time we have for questions today. If your questions weren't answered, don't worry, I will get back to you on the, on your, by your email address. I just really want to thank everyone for joining this webinar. It's a very important topic. We really can help people out there to quit smoking um, and to really help with the general wellness of our uh, current patients or prospective patients out there. Thank you and have a wonderful day.